All right, my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another DIY on my XL Music rolling trays that I sell on my website, xlbrand.com. So check it out and stay tuned for this DIY. changing the setting on here um hit paper setting and i don't know if you guys can see this but i'm going to go to paper size i'm going to change it to the legal which is the eight and a half by 14. now that i did it on my printer i'm going to go in under my picture and i will go to file print and all I'm going to do is change the size to the exact same thing from letter down to dun, 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 whoop. to U.S. legal. So now that'll make it the eight and a half by fourteen. And I am using printable vinyl. I bought it uh, eight and a half by five feet or five yards something like that i'll link it into my subscription so i cut this out into eight and a half by 14 again i'm trying something different so i don't have to piece my images together so now that i've done that now i'm gonna go ahead and print it out so this is the final look this is the way that i'm going to be start doing it now um you guys kind of just going along for the ride with me but this way i don't either have to one print two images and stick them together like most people do where they use the um shipping labels with the printable vinyl that i could cut makes it a lot easier for me for doing the trays all right so stay tuned guys i'm about to put this onto a tray so this is the company that i got the printable vinyl from it's called express expressions vinyl um and this was the size that I got the inkjet printable vinyl, eight and a half by five yard roll. So it allows me to kind of cut it into the shape that I need. So this is the tray, normal dollar store tray. Um, and I'm going to place this right on here. So one thing that I do is if I know I'm not going to really need the edges, I will go ahead and trim them now. Like I know for these for sure. Sometimes I like to use my Cricut one just so I can get an even cut. And I'm gonna move this camera a little closer for you guys. Just because I know that I won't be using um, these sides. Okay. All right, better. I'm not doing these ones because I, I don't know just yet how it's going to fit on the side. So you rather be safe than sorry. So all I'm going to do peel the vinyl like that. One thing with this, I should have said when you're printing it, you're going to print on the smooth or the smooth paper side versus like your glossy slip side. beauty of printable vinyl is that you don't have to be afraid to stick it because you can lift it right back up all right one second just want to make sure it's pretty even 
around both sides. All right, now that it's good, now I'm pretty much just going to smooth down the inside. Don't know where my small, oh, here it is, the Cricut spreader. I like using these ones because they're a lot smaller, but just be careful when you're using the spreader because you don't want to ruin the image. All right, now that the middle is all flat, now we are going to work on the sides and the edges. So I usually lay down my longer sides first just because it's easier. Alright, this is why I didn't cut off the white uh, sides for this. And then you're literally just sticking them around as such on the sides. Same thing on this side. Don't worry about the corners because we're going to get to that part next. Right now, we're just making sure the sides are good. And you just want to make sure you don't have any, like, bubbles or anything on these. Just like that. All right, so roll the corners down. So these two left to do. Make sure, like I said. it down and that's it it's not a whole lot to it but do it same thing with this side straighten that part out a little every corner may not turn out perfectly I wouldn't want you guys stressing yourself out over getting these to lay down. The more you do them, honestly, the more you'll get better at doing them. But that's it for sticking the picture to it. So stay tuned for part two um, or the rest of the video, honestly. All right. For me, y'all, doing it with the printable vinyl that allows me to kind of shape it to what size I want saves me so much time and money uh, i could literally take the vinyl cut it to the length that i want it versus like i showed you most people use the um avery shipping labels the only thing with that is they're only the eight and a half by 11 size when you're making trays it's way bigger than the eight and a half by 11 size and so most people end up having to print out two images and cutting it to fit or just having an image that doesn't fit the whole size. So the size that I found, like I said, I found that fit this is the legal size, which is a eight and a half by 14. Um, and so it's up to you and your choice of how you want to do it. But this way worked so much better for me. Um, and it's so much uh, cheaper and not wasting so much paper if you're only using like two inches off of another sheet so yeah so again i will link everything down below in the description and please stay tuned for the next part of the video guys all right so now for the back of the tray it is optional if you want to cut it i like to clean it up a little bit um but not a whole lot so you can either use like an exacto knife box cutter scissors whatever 
um, you want to do. So I'm not going to trim it all the way up, but just some off of the edge. And I want to make sure this is laying all flat before I trim anything off. So I'm just going to trim right here, just like that. And then that's it. Same on the other side. I'm just going to trim it up. I'm going to lay, make sure our back piece is laying down flat and sticking before I trim anything because I don't want to make it loose. Just like that. And I will be taking this label off. Just like that. So next up, we're going to do the epoxy. So again, I use Amazing Clearcast. Um, there is another brand that I'm going to be trying um, that I heard is really good. I have my gloves, a cup to mix it in, popsicle stick to stir it. I use the gloves to um, <clears throat> to do my edges. I do the epoxy part. Um, a lot of people have been looking into doing those plaques with the QR codes or the Spotify uh, links. I'm going to do something similar, but I want to do it on my tray um, as this is a gift uh, to my fiance. So I want to try to do one on the tray. So I'm just going to show you guys the way that I do it. So I'm not doing Spotify because I don't have a Spotify. Um, and you can use it without having one. Um, but I just, whatever. So I wanted to show people other ways. So you can also do it in a way where you just find your song. So I'm doing, I wanted to have like a bunch of different songs. So I'm doing um, YouTube and it's Mac Miller's like greatest songs. So all I did was copy the link to it. And then there is a website. It is called QR Code Generator. What you do here, essentially you just come to the website, you type in the link of your website and then a code is generated. And then you just hit download. And that's it, so. Once the code is downloaded, I'm going to open it. That is my code right there. Then I'm just gonna put the code onto um, my tray. So in my design space, I'm going to do a new project. And then I already put my vinyl onto my um, mat and then loaded it into the Cricut. So I have like all this extra pieces. So I'm gonna do my image just on the right side. So, all right, so I want the image to be like one a half like one and a half inches um each side and then i'm putting top 10 over top of it like that so now i'm going to click on make it and i am just going to move this over to this corner since my vinyl is on that side hit continue now that it's printing um we chose vinyl for the permanent vinyl all right and then i'll be back so we can weed it out and i can show you guys how we're gonna do this okay so i'm actually gonna end up printing out the qr code on my shipping labels so file print and i am going to scale this down scaled it down so it just did about like 50 um percent and then hit print. And then I'm just going to cut it out. I printed it on one of my shipping labels just so it sticks. And I'm going to just cut it out and place it on there. I did do vinyl, though, for the writing on there, though. So I'm going to place that on there. Place it right there in the top corner. I'm going to put the QR code over here. Just going to make sure it lays down flat. And then I'll lift it off. All right, so now it is on there, and then I'm going to get my QR code that printed out. I'm going to just cut it out and place it right onto the image.
I'm just uh, just cutting it, and then I'll do a closer cut as I get um, down to it. So now I'm cutting. Thing. Now you could do print to cut with your Cricut, but I honestly felt like it was a lot faster just because it's a simple square to cut it myself than to use my Cricut. So. so for those who don't have a Cricut, you can still do it. And so now on the back. I am just going to peel the. So this is now our tray with the name and title and the QR code. Now I'm just going to attempt to make sure the QR code works and then we are going to do the epoxy. So again, need my cup, need my epoxy, the two parts, gloves to do the edges. And I use measuring cups to measure... Um, my parts all right i'm gonna put my gloves on just sometimes the epoxy can be a little harsh so i suggest for people to wear a mask um if need be or use a well ventilated uh area so i have my windows open All right, so part A, I am going to do about 20 milligrams. I used to do 15 each part, but I, I had people tell me, um, or at least I noticed it has like different scratches and stuff that can, I don't know, it just didn't seem thick enough once it's dried. So now I am doing 20 on each side and I haven't had any, um, I don't have any complaints to using 20 on each side. Popsicle stick, I said. I use it to scoop out everything in the cup as well as obviously to stir it um, in my cup. Just make sure you get it all out. All right, and then now for the next part, part B. Now, one thing with the epoxy, you want to mix it slowly because you do not want to create air bubbles um, in your mix. And I will clean these out. All right, so we are going to stir it slowly. I say for a good like two minutes. So I'm going to stir this and I will be right back. All right, now that it is all mixed up, now I'm just going to pour it directly onto the tray i pour it kind of all around the tray just to make it make it easier when i'm um laying it down versus putting it all in one spot so again using the popsicle stick to get everything out you want to make sure you get every drop Now, once all of it is out. So right now I'm just spreading it out, spreading all the epoxy down. And then I am making sure I get right on to my edges. That's what I use my gloves for, to get a clean, um, smooth finish around the edge. Making sure there's no excess drip going on. So I honestly, I mean, I just, like I said, just combined two designs. Right. 
All right, so now all the epoxy is laid down, and I am just going to let it dry. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and stay tuned for more of my DIYs. Bye, my loves. All right, my loves, you know what it is. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can get notified for more of my DIYs. Mwah. Love you.